Um, I would now uh, like to get uh, to our online tour. Uh, our colleagues from Rijeka are already here. Um, so we have an online tour, a uh, virtual tour of the F exhibition Fiume Fantastica, a phenomena of the city, which is also presented by our supporter and partner Rijeka 2020, um, European capital of culture. For those who haven't been with us the first days, this is where we should have been with our real on-site conference. And I'm very happy that the organizers um, made it happen, that we can see some of the museums and some of the exhibitions, at least uh, virtually. So the exhibition follows the last 150 years of Rijeka's urban history, during which the city experienced radical growth and became an important uh, transport and industrial center. Uh, colleagues in Rijeka, can you hear me? Try again. Can you, can you hear us now? Ah, wonderful. Obviously, but it's fine. You, you can hear us, right? Okay, perfect. Uh, yeah, thank you for the introduction. Uh, hi, uh, we are here representing uh, the University of Rijeka and uh, the Rijeka 2020 uh, project. Um, thank you very much for having us here. It's, it's a pleasure being here with you. Uh, so, obviously, as uh, you said uh, in the announcement and the introduction, Rijeka is the 2020 capital of culture, which is the uh, probably the worst year to be a capital of culture of. Uh, so, um, we've been trying to do most of the programs that we envisioned, uh, at least most of the uh, bigger ones, which are, uh, I guess, more important to uh, local and regional aspect uh, of the whole project and um, obviously since uh, a lot of the people who were meant to be here are either not allowed to travel or uh, also have you know difficulties uh, in their work and everything so uh, we are here uh, presenting the Fiume Fantastica phenomena of the city exhibition uh, which is uh, a pretty interesting story not for not just because it's an ex exhibition, but also because uh, it, the sort of the, the, the story of how we get there and uh, why is it so important for uh, even the place uh, in which we are currently, which is not a typical museum. We'll get to the, that point a little bit later, but first uh, a small introduction on to why we are speaking in front of the university as well here. Uh, so uh, the Rijeka 2020 project, which, which was uh, uh, kind of confirmed in 2016 uh, was envisioned and conceptualized in a sense that uh, it has a lot of um, I guess uh, partner a lot of partnerships with local organizations but also some important institutions which are uh, museums uh, and also the university itself uh, it's not always the case that you the university is a strategic partner of the uh, capital culture project, uh, since obviously it's more focused on education and research. But it was very important for us to, to have that aspect as well, uh, because uh, the history of Rijeka and also the, uh, you know, many narratives, many, many narratives that are present here are uh, very important to kind of untangle and understand, uh, because uh, Rijeka is on a transition. Uh, the whole city uh, has been, as you said also earlier, and sort of a industrial and transport hub. And so by losing that in the last couple of decades, we are obviously transitioning into some other, uh, I guess, uh, identity of the city, uh, which has not been clear uh, until yet, you know, what, what is it? Is it going to be more cultural tourism or more education uh, type of city or some new industries? And so in order to kind of have these answers, it was very important for us through the whole project of uh, Rijeka 2020 
to kind of try to find these answers to uh, you know typical stuff like who we are uh, what are we doing here what's our potential and you know things like that and so uh, the university has a large role in that uh, aspect because it obviously has a lot of resources at disposals that many cultural institutions do not so we have access to uh, students uh, to study programs to various experts in uh, various fields who were able to kind of give their contribution uh, to the whole endeavor that we had in the last four years here. Uh, and so Morena and I uh, have been working for the university, kind of coordinating uh, these uh, many experts and many artists as well, and many uh, people and partners and institutions, uh, not just in Croatia, but also abroad, to kind of try to see what our program, or, or at least our program, uh, our part of the program is going to be. Uh, so uh, we kind of concentrated on this uh, sweet and salt area. Uh, it's called sweet and salt because there is a, it's a sort of a part of the city, a very central part, uh, which has been the uh, center for industry and the port as well, which is the largest in Croatia and also this part of the Adriatic. And so <clears throat> uh, by, by losing its original kind of uh, program, uh, there is a lot of discussion of what to do with this space. And so we thought by using this cultural momentum uh, to kind of see what the broader picture of the whole thing is. And so it's called Sweden Soul because there is a river uh, connecting to the sea in this part. Uh, and so we did many programs, which I'm not going to elaborate uh, on uh, at this moment. You can research everything, it's, it's online, but we're, we are going to focus here today is basically this warehouse, which is behind me. Uh, the exhibitions that we did uh, and the Fume Fantastic exhibition, which is currently here in, the, in this warehouse. Uh, and uh, what I guess is the future of or the legacy of uh, our two year uh, work in this warehouse and on this exhibition. Uh, and so the idea was basically to uh, research everything for two years uh, to try to see what the history of uh, the city is, but not just, you know, using typical historical narratives, uh, since once again, it's a very complex history which we switched uh, seven or eight uh, regimes over the last, just last hundred years. So it's a lot of uh, switching borders, a lot of switching, you know, um, uh, I guess, uh, you know, different uh, aesthetics or different uh, sets, ideological, uh, ideological narratives and things like that. And so uh, we wanted to do a different reading of the city or of the city's past in order to get to this future part. Uh, and so uh, we didn't want to do this exhibition uh, in a museum. Uh, we wanted to do in the most difficult place uh, where you can do an exhibition like this, which is a pretty big exhibition. Uh, so we decided to do it in the warehouse. Uh, so it's an old wood warehouse, uh, which my colleague Moran is going to tell you again a little bit more just in a few moments uh, but i guess the point is not just to show uh, by using uh, you know various formats to to show uh, sort of a different reading of the city uh, but also there is this semi hidden agenda of getting people into areas they were not able to access before uh, in order to show them that you can reprogram all these old warehouse old factories all old uh, you know open areas in the city center which can be used for uh, the public and the people and the citizens. So that was kind of our goal. Uh, we didn't just do the research for the exhibition, we also did the production itself. And also there is a, this legacy aspect that we are going to do a book, which is going to be a, already it's a 600 page book, uh, which is uh, going to, I guess, tell the story a little bit more deeper uh, about the whole teams and everything that we researched and also we created a study program which will be able to kind of disseminate the knowledge and our experience over the last couple of years uh, regarding uh, regarding this exhibition so uh, that's the introduction i guess so that's why the university is working with Rieka 2020 that's why we uh, did this exhibition uh, which we feel is it's very amazing uh, in this very difficult place to do this and so i will give uh, my seat to Morana now, who is going to show you a presentation uh, about how it looks like. So, Morana. Hi, 
Uh, first of all, thank, uh, thanks Renato for the introduction. And uh, first of all, what we will do is going to, we are going to walk through the exhibition through one um, presentation, short presentation with photos. And later on, we are going to walk you through the exhibition since we are inside so you can get the sense of the space and the size of this space because we are talking about 1,500 1, square meters just for the exhibition space without the rest of the building and all the spaces for small size exhibitions. So welcome to Fiume Fantastica. Uh, Fiume Fantastica, wait. Let me just share my screen with you. So here we are. This is a photo of Rieka from the air. And what you see here marked is actually the building of Exportremo. I'm showing you this because uh, right here, just across the canal is the National Theater. So we are talking about one space in the near in the nearest center of uh, Rijeka uh, that is Port Authority that was Port Authority and that is now a space for cultural and art events. What we also managed to do is move away the parking. So when you're today looking at this space, there is no parking anymore. This is a walking area for public. We managed to uh, open one parking lot uh, for to general public. This is the Export Drevo building uh, from the outside, and this is the, uh, this was taken for the opening night. This was our idea. So when we started to plan, we drew this, and then we actually created all the elements of the exhibition. What you need to know that we are going to walk you through ten different pavilions uh, that are. Uh, that are going to show different approaches in uh, using material in architectural sense and in using uh, archive materials for the exhibition. What we discovered uh, during our research around about Rijeka is that we can focus on 10 phenomena that are specific for Rijeka, but that are also specific for any other cities, such as infrastructure, common ground, monuments, uh, the city itself. So we wanted to use all that uh, information, all that phenomena on uh, Rijeka as our case study. Uh, so we are going, what we did was separate each phenomena in one uh, pavilion, uh, which is a small size exhibition by itself. But in total, they make a little city that we created, that's Fiume Fantastica. We have also something that we like to call the 11th pavilion, which is not actually a pavilion, it's a timeline created from 52 flags uh, that will tell you the story of the last 150 years of urban history of Rijeka. Since this part with pavilions is a phenomenolog phenomenologic uh, part of the exhibition uh, focused on this phenomena, we, like, uh, we wanted to keep this historical layer also present, which we did within the timeline. Uh, this was our team. As Renato said, the organizer was the University of Rijeka, which is actually a rare situation when the, uh, where, when the university becomes the strategic partner. Then, of course, Rijeka 2020 and the city of Rijeka. The chief curators were Idis Torato, Vedran Mimica and Mara Mrduljas, uh, but the team was created also uh, with uh, Dejan Sujic, Lukas Kansi, Ida Križe Leko, uh, Renato Stankovic and I. Uh, what we have to say that we, since we are a uh, university, uh, we are not a museum and we actually took a space that's not museum space. We had a lot of help from the different museums uh, from uh, Croatia. So we are talking about Maritime and Historical Museum of Croatian Literal here in Rijeka, Muse City Museum of Rijeka, um, Architectural Museum in Zagreb, uh, Museum in Belgrade. They were actually really supportive and really gave us a lot of uh, material that we had to research before uh, the setup. The whole production was done by Delta Lab University of Rijeka and our architect, the main architect was Ida Križeleko. And here we are. I'm sitting in the middle of the space on the other side and uh, but we're going to start from that way and here we go. So on your uh, left side is going to be uh, our, on your right side, sorry, is going to be your first pavilion. What you also need to know that we are going to walk you through in some kind of 
my scenario. There is no right or wrong way in using this exhibition for as an audience. You can you can feel free to go left, or right, from the end to the uh, uh, top, from top to the end. It's not important. Each um, pavilion is a theme by, by itself, a small size exhibition, and also can be walked through and walked around it. We are we actually create a small size urbanism with this type of um, uh, setup. The first pavilion is called Port and Railway, since infrastructure is actually a really important element in developing each city, but in, uh, it was specific for Rijeka because first you had the railway that created the port, and after the port, then the city was created. So we are starting with this pavilion, which is more focused on the historical approach and this type of generic architecture that was needed for such quick development of port city. Uh, right, again, uh, right opposite to it, it's the pavilion that we called Borders, which was done completely from metal scraps that we found at the shipyard, uh, the Trechi Mai, here in Rijeka. And inside, uh, we're talking about this historical element also, uh, which was the border that was going through Rijeka for uh, 17 years, right through the city. And what was really interesting to us is the difference in architecture in this left or right part of the city. We wanted to show this political and historical uh, story part of history through architecture that is really uh, different in this Fiume area and in the Sushak area. Uh, after the borders, the metal pavilion, we are going to containers. This pavilion, the green one, uh, is focused on a theme called networks. So we are, uh, what we wanted to show is a different um, transport of things, merchandise that was going through Rijeka or from Rijeka to all parts of the city or all parts of the world. Um, and all those things actually really influenced uh, the, the, the identity of Rijeka and the development of it, such as sugar, oil, uh, container distribution, people emigrating to United States and the ship Gallup that was the yacht that was Tito was using for his diplomatical uh, travels. And as each city needs to have, we also build a cinema. So opposite the container, the Black Pavilion is actually a huge cinema where we are presenting one special um, artist film created by Igor Bezinovic and Maida Srabovic, especially for this exhibition, that is the film talking the story about the famous characters uh, that either destroyed or built Rijeka, but nevertheless, all of them created its identity. This is the inside of our cinema, and on the right side, uh, you can see the film. And just across the cinema, we are going to the pavilion called Palace. Uh, palaces are also a very important element in the city development, but what we did was select five palaces from different uh, times, from different um, uh, years, but each uh, palace is a symbol of different transgressions. We wanted to choose uh, palaces that never change their visual appearance, they always stay the same. But what happened was the change of the program happening inside, such as one palace was built as a theater, then became the army uh, house and was there for ages uh, till the war. And then after the war, what happens is that one NGO takes over the building and creates beautiful contemporary art. We took those type of examples and presented them uh, in this uh, continuous exterior and continuous interior. So where you're walking around the pavilion, you're walking through one collage of these five uh, palaces. We created some kind of architectural monster. And as you enter inside, you're uh, walking through different interior uh, of these palaces, but all connected in a uh, collage. Just out, when you get outside of palaces, you're going towards the uh, pavilion called the city. Uh, the basic information that you need to know is that city of Rijeka after the Second World War had to be renovated. What they decided is to give this task to one architect called Igor Emili, who actually did the reconstruction of the old part of Rijeka. Old part of Rijeka was the, you know, centuries old, and but the houses were just ready to be torn down. So what he did was a really specific combination of old housing projects with combination with modernistic architecture. 
This was a very bo uh, bold uh, intervention that Rijeka did. So we presented it through the exhibition on the wall, uh, walls of outside walls of the pavilion. But as you enter inside the pavilion, you're actually entering uh, a computer game that we created. We actually made a 3D model of uh, Rijeka and computer game uh, where you as audience can uh, play this game as a, it's organized as a treasure quest. You're walking through Rijeka, you're as, answering questions about uh, Rijeka, you're learning about Rijeka's history, streets, and uh, uh, moving throughout the city in a very, it's not just for children, of course, done because we have different layers in this computer game uh, regarding on the interest of uh, each um, audience. Uh, as this is the pavilion from the outside and just across it is a pavilion called Leisure. It's a pavilion dedicated to architecture of tourism, uh, focusing on contrast between Opatia and uh, the islands around Rijeka. Rijeka was never a touristic city, but what was happening that you needed Rijeka to come to Rijeka with the train, but the whole tourism was developing around the ring of Rijeka. So on one side you have Opatia, which was an Austrian monarchy uh, symbol for leisure and uh, health tourism. And on the other side, after the Second World War, you have beautiful hotels uh, create, being created in very modernistic approaches, such as Haludovo, which was the place for Bobo Guccione and Penthouse, uh, um, Uvala Scott, uh, which was another crazy uh, hotel project that still exists and still being used. We wanted to show this uh, difference in approach with this uh, uh, house, little house that was used to uh, be placed on uh, beaches for changing clothes, for changing your bathing suits. So the exhibition is actually in this, uh, in the, on the beach in this little house. All the way, as you walk through the big exhibition, you will always see a timeline. You, are, you, can, you can feel free to enter at any point, at any year, at any uh, time in this timeline and go then outside back to some pavilion. The pavilion made of rocks is actually called the uh, common ground. Common ground uh, is telling the story about how Rijeka, since geographically uh, uh, Rijeka is very narrow, uh, how Rijeka needed to build new places. And what she did was dig out places and put uh, what she dug out on other places. Those places, those new places, new places that were um, being created, there were places for sports. So such as Prelo Cantrida, where you have the swimming pool and the football field. They were always creating huge, large spaces for some type of sport and community activities. This is the inside of the pavilion. Um, the model presents Rijeka and all around there are uh, these archive photos proving the different uh, uses of these spaces. Uh, Opposite to common ground is a, is a pavilion dedicated to monuments. Uh, Lucas Kansi was our uh, chief uh, um, uh, collaborator in this project. We actually took his research as the base for more research. Each pavilion, uh, either on Rijeka or around Rijeka, is presented with a, a model, uh, with a text and uh, with drawings and some archive photos. Uh, what we wanted to um, emphasize here in this exhibition is the space and the, the relationship between the space and the monument itself. We are not focused on the political and historical uh, uh, descriptions of this monument. We are focusing on their aesthetic categories and the space, how they combine and how they influence on uh, one another. Across is the last pavilion, it's called Fantastic Zones. And this pavilion is actually created as a movie set. So as you enter uh, in our little set, you're actually entering the potential futures of Rijeka that we drew as a, and created as an application. So we are playing with this uh, uh, movie set uh, moment, uh, but behind the pavilion, you actually have or the uh, history of our disease, <laughs> let's say it like that. It's the uh, frustration and fascination with Fiume Fantastica. So all these elements are actually our office. Uh, and this is the really backstage of uh, the whole project that we did. Timeline uh, is looking like this. One side is with, um, the one side of these flags is dedicated to uh, archive material and 
text uh, descriptions. And the other side are actually glitch flags of Rijeka or any country or kingdom, whatever was uh, Rijeka in at that certain point. Uh, these are just some photos of overall project with, uh, uh, with uh, people present inside. And now we are going to have our little walkthrough. Renato is going to uh, jump in and uh, start. So. Yeah. Okay, just a second. Yeah. Hopefully you can hear me now. And so basically now we were simulate at least how good we can simulate uh, sort of the experience of going through the exhibition. So this is sort of the entry area and Morana will take you on the walk tour. So now we are in the pavilion dedicated to boats and trains, to port and railway. As I said, we are from the Pork Beach Pavilion, wherever, and it's getting high. The pavilion we are in our first uh, task with the uh, panel. On our right is the pavilion, uh, but we will end now with the pavilion dedicated to board. The border. Even if the bit actually really pressed in the, uh, the same architecture of the building. Renato, I'm not sure if you hear me, but if you could yeah. slow down a bit and be close sure. to uh, Morana sure. talking, because we just hear bits of what uh, Morana okay. is saying. Yeah. So you need to follow her <laughs> on the shoulder. Yeah. Thank you. Got it. So now we are walking behind the pavilion borders, going towards the networks. The networks are actually uh, made of a container, since one of the themes is actually the container uh, the transport that is very, very important to development on Rijeka. So on one side, you have different archive materials proving different approaches of things that were traveling through Rijeka. And on the other side, you have the map of the city with a specific legend that if you decide to follow each line can actually take you to all the parts of the world where each these things, uh, this uh, matters was traveling, such as uh, oil, um, sugar, uh, Tito's boat, Galeb, and architecture development in the, the countries of Nan and Lion. Just across, we are entering the pavilion cinema. So now we are in the pavilion uh, palace. We are in this continuous interior combined on these different five uh, palaces. Uh, in the uh, tablets that you're seeing on the wall, we actually get a, a gift that will prove the different developments of each house. These different transgressions, how the house changed from a theater to a political uh, dome or space or a contemporary art.
So welcome to the Pavilion Leisure, where we are actually standing on the beach. Uh, Ivo Robic is playing in the background. He's a famous Croatian uh, singer of chansons that uh, was specific for uh, the great terraces of Hotel in uh, Opatia. So one side is specifically dedicated to uh, architecture of tourism in Opatia, which is this type of health tourism, a very relaxed in tourism. And on the other side of this little house is the architecture of hedonistic tourism that was mostly happening after the Second World War um, in the islands and in the space, uh, uh, islands around Rijeka in the county. So for example, Aludovo, which was a space for a uh, penthouse uh, parties. Pavilion City is just across. Welcome to the interior of our computer game. As you can see, these are different layers uh, of the computer game that we created. Are hidden. So the audience can choose whether you want to play the game or you want to see somebody playing and see how he's moving through Rijeka and what he's doing in answering all these uh, questions about history of Rijeka. Common ground. So Common Ground Pavilion is dedicated uh, to these spaces of new collective uh, um, socializing through sport or recreation. Rijeka has them really, really a lot. And what is specific in this uh, room, this pavilion is also one uh, photo that we will show in a more uh, better view. To understand how Rijeka is actually interesting and uh, um, a bit weird and fantastic, is this, I showed you the position of Expo Drvo right across the National Theatre. So look at this. This is the center of Rijeka that is a space for drying wood. Here is the National Theatre, here is the residential area. Rijeka wasn't a city, it was first just a port and then the city was created later on. On one side is the pavilion uh, monuments, and on the other side is the pavilion fantastic zone. We will just have a little look in the pavilion monuments and then go uh, take it to the back to see the backstage of the project. So all the information about the monuments are either in these models, in texts, in archive for photos, uh, and in photos for taken just today. We wanted to show the different, um, the, the wide range of monuments that was being created uh, in Rijeka and around Rijeka, but all those monuments are uh, created in public space. We were interested in this uh, relationship with space and the monument itself. We are starting with one from the 19th century and finishing with the most recent monument uh, created in creation history, which is the Bridge of Defenders in Creation War of Independence, created by an uh, architectural studio called Trial Hade. Just to 
joke. In this cube set, we actually allow audience to play, to, to uh, position themselves in different fantastic futures uh, of the ECA that we think may happen in 20, 30, 50, 100 years. But we are like actually uh, letting people play with this idea. And behind the, our uh, movie set, we are entering the documentation of our research. And once again, the timeline, the historical layer that gives you more uh, information about the ECA and about the whole concept of the exhibition. And so here we are. Uh, what, uh, uh, sorry, can I hear you? Uh, that would be it from us. I think we actually did it in uh, 30 minutes as it was planned. Uh, you can hear me, right? Can I pull it up? Let me see. It. Sorry? Yes, we can. Oh, okay. Uh, you were muted, I think. Okay. Uh, so, um, this is actually uh, it from us. Uh, do we have any questions? I was just looking now. Ah, okay. I have uh, seen. Okay, okay, okay. Uh, if we have any a minute or two, uh, I will uh, uh, maybe ask uh, answer a couple of these questions. Although I think as I was talking, I will answered some of them. As uh, Yulia Pagels asked, uh, did we collaborate with Ms. Mir? Of course, all our research was uh, based on the material that we could find in museums in Rijeka, in Croatia, and even in some museums outside Croatia, which I must uh, uh, say a great thank you to all of these uh, directors of museums and curators that were willing enough to to uh, collaborate with us. And a lot of archives also, I forgot to uh, mention them. Uh, so regarding the audience, uh, audience, I would say, contribute, started to contribute to the exhibition uh, as soon as we opened. Uh, because we did a setup, but some of the fine tuning was actually done with the audience since what we decided to do is to do the tour guide for uh, general public all the time. And no, every tour guide that we did through the exhibition was always done by somebody from the um, uh, curatorial team. So it's Renato, it's me, or it's Idis, or it's Ida. We don't use uh, students, uh, art history students, to do that for us. We do that tour guiding. I think we did over 150 tour guides so far. That's like one per day, um, two actually per day. Uh, because we wanted to communicate with audience, we wanted to, to uh, see what their thoughts are. We're not doing a lecture here with the exhibition. We're actually doing a walk through this city that uh, we created. And also uh, the reason why we have a little uh, um, plastic things on the beach is because the children wanted to build the houses. They wanted to create their own urbanism in that sense. So we brought it. It was uh, just an, an, one layer. Um, uh, uh, on the exhibition. And I will read one. This is how to spend most of the time. Okay, uh, uh, Annelies van der Ven, I'm sorry if I pronounce your name wrong, um, uh, ask uh, whether do we have any audience research in how people move through the spaces where they spend most of the time. Actually, we do. We have, uh, this is one of the things that um, we asked our students that are guarding the exhibition. Uh, we have one um, document uh, the creating with them uh, just for research so we can do statistics uh, afterwards. And uh, I must say that um, the, what so far 
uh, we um, concluded is that uh, there is a very interesting uh, this uh, age difference. So people from uh, 40 to 60 uh, more uh, spend their more time on timeline, while a younger audience actually plays more uh, with this pavilion part of the exhibition, and younger audience is more. Um, it's easier for them to ask direct questions. What we like really is that when you start talking, uh, when we start guiding the, the, um, this walkthrough, uh, we always tell uh, the, our audience that there are no stupid questions. Feel free to ask anything. This is a dialogue, not a monologue. And we actually managed to do that, that people in the first pavilion just start asking questions. This is something that in uh, a Dutch system would be normal. In Croatian system is not. The, the Croatian people never ask questions, trust me. But I think we, that we managed to create some type of uh, dialogue. Uh, there's another question uh -huh. about the uh, economical support, or I guess would be the uh, maybe the price, the final tag price of the whole thing. So uh, obviously, it was one of the, the bigger projects, uh, at least bigger exhibition projects. So we had access to some 350,000 euros, uh, which covered uh, basically two years of work. So it wasn't just the setup of the exhibition. It was uh, a lot of, uh, you know, buying photographs, uh, you know, paying researchers to go to Vienna, to Budapest, to various places, uh, getting, uh, you know, access to, to various uh, knowledge from uh, from abroad so we had a lot of people from uh, other countries uh, coming here uh, working with us on on workshops uh, and basically this whole like so two years research plus the whole production of the exhibition plus the whole uh, at least one part of the marketing aspect so the whole team working here uh, while the exhibition is open of course all the uh, all the cost of the multimedia equipment so everything is kind of accounted in this uh, i guess 350000 euros price uh, but the good thing about uh, the exhibition is that it doesn't have to be removed it's, it's not a museum so it doesn't really have you know there, there are no current plans and into something that will replace this so it can easily become open you know next year or a year after that or it can be upgraded or it can be removed you know so we, we, use, yeah. we use for any uh, other exhibition because what we did when we started to plan the um, exhibition setup is uh, our main question it was, can we use these pavilions later for something else? And the answer is actually yes, because if you tear down these uh, walls made of plaster and if you tear, take down our prints, you actually get a construction that can be reused for any other type of uh, uh, exhibition. Maybe there should be 10 exhibitions of different artists here in this space. This space is the Expo Drvo building is actually think of it as a street with a roof this it was this was an old warehouse that was used for drying wood it has nothing to do it's just like a street with a roof what we actually wanted to do is this type of arsenale moment when you're walking like in venice you're walking through pavilions because we wanted to show this north south orientation as a building and put in this fantastic fiume fantastic rieka inside fiume is actually rieka uh, the title of the city and uh, just to just to finish, there is a, a small follow up question uh, going about uh, whether, you know, who financed the whole the whole thing, whether it had, you know, support, I guess, from the private sector or from people. So uh, it was mostly uh, publicly funded. We had access to some sponsorship deals uh, which covered, you know, materials or, or work done on the production sense, but it was mostly financed by the the uh, by the public, that means the city, the regional government, the Ministry of Culture, and obviously the European Union covering the whole Rica 2020 project. I think this is our time. Yes, so, yes, yes. Julia gave us the cue. We were yeah. too long. Uh, sorry, uh, and I hope that uh, we didn't uh, bug you too much with our story. There's a lot to tell. Uh, 30 minutes is really. <laughs> yeah. uh, and that's it. So, yeah. hello from Rijeka and enjoy the rest of the conference. Thank you for inviting yeah. us. Thank you very much. Thank you, Morana and Renato. This was really a great tour, especially for the people who haven't been to a museum in quite a long time because most of the museums are closed in Europe. So, this was especially nice to see. And again, uh, a good argument to go, come to Rijeka at some point.
Uh, just for before we uh, leave you to a long lunch break, uh, I would like to say that at 2 p.m. we are meeting again with the webinar, How do I make my museum more sustainable? Please be on time because we will be starting on time at 2 p.m. Uh, the webinar will be facilitated by Kathleen Southwick uh, from Key Culture. Uh, if you would like to join and you haven't uh, registered, please find the link to this webinar in the chat. And uh, last but not least, uh, tomorrow morning, we will resume at 10 uh, a.m. for our dedicated session on the coronavirus and museums. Uh, this uh, session is unfortunately, or fortunately, fully booked already. But I would like um, to take this um, moment to encourage all of you to really respond to our follow-up survey um, on the coronavirus impact on museums. Uh, the link is also in the chat. And I would just like to say that the more feedback we have from the more people uh, responding, the better arguments we can build for museums, for their economic support, for uh, um, keeping them open for uh, transforming uh, their digital capacity. So please, please go ahead and respond to them. So this is where I end. Uh, we'll see each other today at a bit later at 2 p.m. Thank you very much.